Amen. 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 We praise the name of the Lord for a wonderful moment in his presence. And I would like to congratulate every believer in the house this day. I know that as you have come to seek the face of the Lord, you are returning to your different home with the grace of God abundant for your life in Jesus' name. Today, all over in the world of Seventh-day Adventist Church, we set aside today as a religious liberty day. Religious liberty day. And probably you might want to ask, what is the meaning of religious liberty day? As Adventists, we simply believe in the freedom to believe what you want to believe. The freedom to do what? To believe what you want to believe. And so we have a statement of purpose as a church which says, the Seventh-day Adventist church strongly believes in religious freedom for all people. A person's conscience, not government, should dictate his or a choice to worship. Amen. And so we believe that the Lord, even from the very beginning, had given us the right of choice, the ability to choose either to serve God or to do otherwise. But the Lord had always made everything open before us as men that we should choose that which is godly. I pray that as we choose down deep from our conscience that we will choose to do that which is right. We will do that which we glorify the name of the Lord. And I don't know, I want to quickly pray for someone. Probably you've been hurt while serving your God. Probably your right to worship the Lord the way you want to had been trampled upon. And you are hurting down deep in your heart. Some few months ago, one of the ministers of the church by name Pastor Antonio Montero was imprisoned for a sin that he never committed and he was denied all opportunity to serve his God. Just two Sundays ago, because as a church we have a department that stands in for us, for our conscience, before government and in for, in, before the people of the world. Just two Sundays ago, this man was released after 22 months imprisonment. That is a testimony to what the Lord is using his church to do, to defend those whose rights to worship are being denied. And so if you are here this morning and your right is being denied, you are hurting down there, I would like to pray with you. Wherever you are, just bow your head as we seek the Lord in prayer. Father, we are grateful. We appreciate you for every opportunity you've given us to worship you. Every opportunity you've given us to love you. Every opportunity you've given us to remember that you are our creator. And to your son or daughter who is here, who is hurting, whose rights have been trampled upon, whose conscience have been snared by issues around him that are beyond his or her control. Father, we pray this morning, because you are the author, author of peace, 
May peace that passes all human understanding transcend into the hearts of your children. Is there someone whose right to worship, whose right to know you have been denied? May you open a way, a way to know you, a way to receive from you divine light and blessing. And above all, as a church, help us to stand in, to always stand for the right, to stand always for that which we glorify your name. To stand always for those things that is according to God says the Lord. Thank you because above all, when you return, our names shall not be missing from the book of life. Thank you because you will take all glory since we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to listen to our wonderful choir at this moment to bless our soul. Choir, I know you are ready to bless our soul. The Lord will use you to his glory in Jesus' name. say thanks for the thing and for me things are on this earth yet you came to prove your love for me the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude all that I am and ever hope to be I owe it all to thee
Amen. To God be the glory for the great things he had done. In times like this, when we need spiritual songs that will lift our hearts to heaven, we praise the name of the Lord for this choir. His name will be praised forevermore. Amen. Let's bow as we pray. Father, it's time to listen to your word. Because you are the author of divine strength and healing and transformation, we pray that those who will listen to your word this hour will receive strength will receive healing, will receive transformation, will receive success to their situation. To your glory, we have prayed in Jesus' name. In time like this, from the text of the hymn that was taken as we began this divine service, you need a savior. In times like this, you need an anchor. You need to be very sure of it now. Because this world that we live is a world filled with uncertainties. A world filled with challenges. A world filled with confusions. In time like this, you need the Lord to give you hope. In time like this, you need the Bible. In times like this, you do not need to be idle. You need to be sure where your anchor holds. You need to be sure where your faith lies on. You need to be sure if your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Amen. Amen. In time like this, when the world is in confusion, in time like this, when we need someone who will come to our rescue, in time like this, when we need answers to prayers we need answers to questions that have bogged our hearts we need answers to so many mountain of questions that men over the centuries men over the ages have not been able to answer in time like this, we need to be sure where our anchor holds. Praise the Lord. In the world of technology, in the world where we, 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 new things are coming up every day, in the world where new inventions are coming up day after day, we need to be sure where is our place. We need to be sure that the different innovations, the different technological advancements are taking us close to God and not away from God. In time like this, when there are so many new things happening around us, we need to be sure where our faith lies. We need to be sure where our anchor holds. Brethren, this is the time to seek the face of the Lord. This is the time for us to seek the Savior because there is nothing like our God. There is no one like our Savior. There is no one like the king of the universe. I want to tell you, 
The world is in a limbo. Why? Because there is confusion. Even among the Christians, the so-called Christians, there is confusion about what we believe. There is confusion about what we know as Christians. And that is why the Bible text that was given to us today from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. I believe we are with our Bibles. Are we with our Bibles? The book of Ephesians, chapter 15, chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. It says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. I read again. See that you walk circumspectly. Let me take this version. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. But live like those who are what? Who are wise. Make the best of the present time. Because we live in a wicked age. Amen. I was looking at, I was talking about technological advancements. And I was taking a time to look at this A380 Airbus. It is a unique type of Airbus. To as many that have traveled through airplanes, this is a new type of inventions in the area of aeroplane where all the comfort that you desire are built just in one. You have a restaurant, you have a bar where you can take your time out in the evening and in the night you have a comfort zone where you can take your rest and even browse what is happening. You are in the hair. You also have your time for your personal study. The world is advancing. Knowledge is increasing. I don't know how many of us would like to have this sort of experience. Let's look at another, another form of pleasure. Probably you would like, would like to be in the explorer of the sea. This is another latest version of what technology I'll be able to do. In time like this, there you can have your pleasure. A swimming pool right on the sea. Right in the ship, you can go shopping. You can go shopping in the night. You can buy everything you need to buy. You can have your banquets right on the ship. In time like this, you can have a time out in the evening with friends. In time like this, where pleasure has taken hold of us. I don't know how many of us will love things like this. In time like this, when we have everything to give us pleasure, we need to remember the one who is the source of everything good. We want the latest car. Probably you need this type of a car that can meet all your needs. A time to do all your office assignment without necessarily getting to the office. Probably you need a, a, a car. Why? Right there you can have, you can prepare your tea, either hot or cold. I don't know how many of us will love this. Even right in your car, you can have a conference meeting. You don't need to get to the office. Right in your car, you can have the best of comfort. In time like this, when glory, fame, fortune, money, success has taken the place of happiness, where do we put our hearts? Where do you put your focus? Where do you put your faith? Probably we've been talking about pleasure. Let's take another side of the world. This is another pleasure, isn't it? A pleasure ride. 
In time like this, where some people, the only way, the only way for them to on their wedding day is to have a very interesting wedding car. Very interesting. I don't know how many of us have seen this other word. In time like this, when some somewhere are battling to survive. In time like this, where people are struggling. I don't want you to just be, be taken aside by these illustrations. In time like this, when all around us is filled with poverty, unfortunately, the more we build graduates, the more we have in intellectual development in our world. But in Africa, this is all that we can do. We have not been able to produce men who want to transform the world. We have not been able to produce people who are sincerely ready to impact life in time like this. Where do we put our own hearts? It is not all about what I'm showing you, but trying to put our attention to God. In time like this, when poverty is written all around us, where do you put your hope? In time like this, we need to remember that out there, no matter what you are passing through right now, you need to be a happy hand to bless other people. In time like this, we need a savior. In time like this, when, when the world, you see, in Nigeria, especially in Lagos, during the rainy season is always a time of fear. And that is the situation with all over the world. Nature is taking over the whole universe and men are angry. Men are afraid. In time like this, when, when the wind blows, it is fear. When the rain falls, it is fear. We need to know that we have a savior we can hang our trust and our faith in. In time like this, when different social networks have taken our place with God, we need to know where we want to fit. In time like this, when all that we know, except we are using this instrument for the, for the usefulness of our work, in time like this. In time like this, when corruption, corruption is everywhere, even in the classroom. And probably, I don't know, probably a time is coming in Babcock, God forbid, that people will have to write exam and their faces have to be covered. A time like this when even children know what is called corruption. When we drink corruption, we need to begin to think every word because we have a savior. Matthew 24 verse 37. It says, but as the days of Noah were, so also with the coming of the son of man. When Genesis 6 verses at a particular time in the history of the world, it was recorded, it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. Can that be said of the expression, the sadness of God about our generation? That it repented the Lord that he had created our generation. Probably during the generation of Noah, there was no internet, there were no technological development. But the height of immorality was so much. In time like this, when we need to cry unto God to save us. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, and in our generation doing all sorts of things. Until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came, and took them away. So, coming of the Son of Man be. Brethren, a time like this, when all the signs of the coming of the Lord is being fulfilled, when men will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, 
when youths are spoiled their generation with alcohol, when youths have spoiled their generation with drugs, when youths have spoiled themselves with every form of immorality, our media have glorified sex. And that is why every station, every internet site, it is glorified by sex. Probably it is the order of the day in many European countries. Nudity is the thing. This happened just a few months ago. Somewhere in Europe where a couple decided to have their wedding naked. And they invited guests and were told that about 120 guests that attended that wedding came naked as well. That is the generation that we live. That is the world that you and me live. The devil has taken hold of man. The devil sin had gripped the whole soul of humanity. Gay homosexuality has been the order of the day. Gayism is the order of the day anywhere. Glory be to God that yet in Nigeria it has not been legalized. Who knows what is coming up in few years from now? The world has turned upside down. The world promotes homosexuality, even in the house of God. From the throne, from the altar of God, where the truth ought to be said, we can see all the different countries that have allowed gay marriage. God forbid, who knows what happens in the next few years. Probably the whole countries of the world we support gay marriage. Recently, even the man that the whole world see as the spiritual father of the world, recently said he doesn't have any issue with that, that he doesn't want to spoil the conscience of men. And so, if anybody will be a gay and uh, wants to serve his God, well, let it be. And he's laying credence with his statements to support homosexuality. In time like this, when we see all this happening, where should our attention be? Our attention should be towards heaven because that is where our hope lies. Our attention needs to go back to the Bible because the Bible will provide the answer to all the confusion in the world. In time like this, when studying exhorts you, there are some people somewhere there that want this education. How do you maximize the opportunity you have as a student? In time like this, when all that they have is without uniform, without a classroom, even the lecturer does not have a cloth to put on. But you are blessed, possibly with an air-conditioned classroom, with everything. In time like this, how do you glorify the God of heaven for the opportunity you have? In time like this, when you don't like the vegetarian diet from the cafeteria, you are always complaining, always crying, always saying, I don't want it. Do you remember somewhere there, some part of the world, they long to just have a bite and they have not? In time like this, when some people are food are being weighed. Yes, most of us, when we visit the cafeteria, what do we do? We take them and throw them away. In time like this, we need to go back to God. Probably some of you are weary of studying. In time like this, we have people who are longing to study even while they are working. They are all around you. They are all around us there. In time like this, when some people have food, but they don't have the strength to eat it, in time like this, when you are on diet, most of us are always on diet, but there are some people who just wish to eat. In time like this, we need to begin to raise our focus back to heaven. The word of God says in Matthew 24, Christ says there will be famine, pestilences, and earthquake in various places. 
down there somewhere there the world is aching the world is crying there are people that are passing through challenges beyond them the world is coming to you as a challenge this morning how do you serve your god how should you increase in your work with the lord how should you be wiser in your dealing with the lord because the time is coming when all that we see will be no more when all that we desire from this world will be lost and lost forever in time like this in time like this <coughs> the world is from mouth to mouth there is sovereign there is hunger and there is death approximately we are told 57 million people die each year because of farming this amount so can you see the number of people who suffer hunger every day 156,000 people of the world's population 60 percent are malnourished and 20 percent are what are staffing probably you are among the 20 few that can say i can feed well the world is growing old and that, that is why the book of isaiah says the world is growing old like a garment even as these signs are beginning to appear we need to remember that there is a god in heaven who needs your heart you need to know that there is a god in heaven who needs our worship that is the god that we have been called to worship today in time like this when the whole world is groaning in time like this when your parents super protection bothers you there are some people who do not have parents in time like this when you are bored playing games some have no other option than <coughs> some don't have any other option than what they have with them in time like this we need the savior in time like this we have options some do not have options in time like this we need the lord to come to our head in time like this when you are upset when you are ordered to go to bed probably in our different hostels by 10 by 11 we have been forced to go to bed but there are some people who long to be awake but they can never be awake they don't even have time to go to bed in time like this when some have only this as their means of having their rest in time like this we need to begin to ponder we need to begin to consider in time like this when there is war all around us in time like this in time like this it is the war of Boko Haram's. It is the war, tribal wars. We need the Savior. We need the Lord to save humanity. We need the, world, the Lord to take us out of all the troubles that the world had brought upon us. In time like this. When the earth itself is destroying the earth. In time like this. 1 Thessalonians 5 3 says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction comes upon them and they shall not escape. Lord of conferences, Lord of summits, Lord of peace treaties have been held, but instead of peace, it had been calamity upon the world, it had been turmoil upon the world, disease everywhere. And that is why in time like this, we need to be cautious our attitude. Hate is real. In time like this, we need to watch out. Hate is real. And not only AIDS. There are sicknesses killing more than AIDS. 
in time like this, you need a savior. In time like this, I want to call you. You need to come to the Lord if your life, your attitude, your approaches to life had been dangerous. The Lord needs you to give him his heart today. The Lord needs someone who will say, Lord, I know that you are my Lord. I know that you are my Savior. I know that I cannot succeed this year without you. I know that without you, I cannot make it. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the Son of Man be. A time when everybody will do what seems right to him or her. But I encourage you as fellow believers, this is a time to know the Lord. A time is coming when you will want to see the Lord, but it will be hard for you to meet with the Lord. There will be a time when you will love to hear the truth, but the truth will not be available for you. A time is coming when you will love to hear songs that will inspire you to heaven, and those songs will not be there. This is the time. This is the time for you to know the Lord. This is the time for you to give yourself to the Lord. I don't know if there is anybody here this afternoon who wants to say, in time like this, when all the world around us is filled with evil, the book of 1 Corinthians 15, 8 says, Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. That is a promise of God for you. Because a time is coming when the Son of Man will appear in the clouds of heaven. To give to every man reward for what he or she has done. Are you ready for the Lord? If the Lord comes today, if the Lord comes in the next five minutes, can you truly say, I am ready to be received of the Lord? Are you ready to say in time like this, in time like this, when this message is coming to you, as an evidence, as a witness that you have heard the truth, in time like this, can you truly say unto you, I surrender her? Ephesians 5.15, as a reminder again, says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the best of the present time, for it is a wicked age. How many of us are ready to make use of the present opportunity to hear the word of the Lord? I want you to bow your heads as I invite you to the throne of grace. In time like this, when there is so much pleasure, when there is so much poverty, when there is so much wickedness, where, where there is so much failure, where is your place in the plan of God? Why not talk to God? Where is your place in the timetable of God for this planet? When the world is growing old as garments, when the end of the world is at hand, where is your place? I want you to talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to put my place in you. I want to put my anchor on you. It is a time to go back to the old time religion. The old time religion that searches the scripture. The old time religion that serves the Lord. The old time religions that honors the Lord. The old time religions that care for the sick around us. The old time religion that shares to the poor. The old time religion that works 
holy and righteously. I invite you to worship this God. I invite you to honor this God. I invite you to give all glory unto his name. Because he is your maker. He is your savior. He is your king. This year he can lead you through. Even for the rest of the years of this world, the Lord can give you victory. Why not talk to him? Father, thank you for your sons. Thank you for your daughters. Thank you for as many that have called upon you. That have been reminded that the world is coming to an end. And that we need to watch the way we live. Oh Lord, I pray. Help us to live wisely, knowing you and serving you always. Help us to live watching and praying unto eternal salvation. Help us, Lord, to walk before you, not as the world works, but as it will honor your holy name. Help us to walk so that we might be a light to those that have never known you. And after our journey on earth, Father, we pray that your glory will radiate in our lives. We pray that your blessing will be abundant upon our soul. We pray that the gain of eternal salvation will not elude any, any one of us. Thank you because you have answered. Blessed be your holy name, since we have prayed in Jesus' name.